Okay, so the first notch that we want to talk about today is a basic steak notch. Now, if I were preparing this branch for a steak, I would want to prepare the top of my steak first. I'm going to be pounding on this, unless this is going to be my point, but it doesn't really matter if I cut it off later and make the point or if I make the point now. Either way, whichever end of my steak I'm going to be pounding on, I want to prepare that a little bit. If I leave a raw cut like this and start pounding on that with my axe or a baton or whatever the case may be, it's going to have a tendency to mushroom and split out. The way I can circumvent that is to take my knife and just carve around it just like this to chamfer that edge and then I'll go up a little bit more and by doing this it will keep those wood fibers from splitting out as easy and mushrooming on you when you go to pound it on this thing, like I said, with your axe or your baton to drive that steak into the ground. Okay, so let's talk about a basic steak notch or what's called a seven notch. What we're going to do is we're going to use our baton for advantage here because we basically have to cut a straight slit into this piece of wood down about one third of the way through the diameter of the wood. Because we're using a knife and not a saw, that's a little bit difficult to do by pushing down on your knife, especially on a piece of hardwood. So what we're going to do is, where we chamfered our top right here so we can pound on it, we're going to move down from that about an inch. And we're going to lay our knife on top of that and take our baton and basically pound our blade down into the wood. Then we'll pull it out using our safety type grip. We can now push up into this and we'll stop at that stop cut. And we can remove wood very controlled and very carefully just like this. And again this is green hardwood. A whole lot different than trying to carve pieces of softwood. And when you get to the point where you are not cutting clean like those right there then you can put your knife back on top and cut a little bit deeper if you deem that to be necessary get yourself on a good level area to do this and it doesn't have to be real deep like I said it can be a third of the way through is about as much as you want to go otherwise you're going to compromise the strength of that steak but you just need enough of a notch there to catch whatever type cordage you're using and I can see by looking at this cut that I'm starting to get into the heartwood right here so I would call that good and say that was deep enough and that would be a seven notch shaped like a seven or a steak notch then I would just cut this off to length put a point on the other end using my knee lever grip and I'd have my first steak. Okay, the next, next notch that we're going to talk about is a log cabin notch. And a log cabin notch basically is a straight notch or an overlapping notch. So if we were going to lay another piece of wood on top of this and we wanted them to be as if they were one piece of wood when they came together so there wasn't a big space in between them, we want them to interlock like Lincoln logs we would have to make that cabin or straight notch. And basically, that just involves making two cuts, just like we did on the seven notch, spaced apart however far you want that notch to be, however wide you want that notch to be. So we're just going to take our knife, pound it down inside, decide what our spacing is going to be, Again. and then we should be able to take that and pop it and you can see that wood removing out of there just by going down inside and turning our knife that's going to split that wood and if we've got both of our cuts deep enough or even with each other 
we'll be able to split that wood out of there fairly easily. And then we can turn it around and clean the notch up from the other side. We've got this side just a little bit deeper. I'm looking for that, again, I'm looking for that heartwood. And I can see it a little bit coming through right there. So we'll go a little deeper on this side to get that evened up. And you can see that notch just that popped right out of there. That wood popped right out when I did that. And then we can just clean that up to match. Shear it off with our knife. And we'll have a nice square notch. Now one thing that you don't ever want to do is kind of what I'm doing now, but I'm being very gentle when I do it. You never want to cut towards your own hand. That's a big mistake. What I was doing with that was I was barely pushing on the knife just to get a very fine shaving. The best bet is to come over here and attack it from the other side so that you're never cutting toward yourself in any way, shape, or form. Better to have to move the wood and avoid the accident. And once we have that notch cleaned up, we can then lay another piece of wood with a similar, similar notch on top of this and we'll avoid that space and it'll look like it's one piece of wood that's just put together where we can lash it right there. And that will give us that style notch that Lincoln Logs have, them, have in them or a straight lashing type notch. Okay, the next notch that we need to talk about is called the V-notch. And a V-notch is a very good notch to use if you're putting a toggle to a piece of string, like on the Roycroft pack frame or if you were putting a toggle on a trap system or something like that, where you just want to hang something off a toggle, you can use a V-notch in that toggle and the string will stay in place. Very, very simple notch to make. All you're going to do is take your knife at two different angles, basically, go down in, put it at an angle the other direction, and pop the notch. And that gives you what's called a V-notch in your stick. And you can make that again, you can make that as deep as you want to make it, and as wide as you want to make it, with your baton. Batoning is definitely the easy way to do this stuff, because it gives you much more control over things. Now we're going to use this V-notch later, so it's important to understand how to make that V-notch. The next notch we're going to talk about is what I call a bail notch, or a hook notch. And the way you make that notch is, you're going to make two cuts in this direction. So you'll make one cut that goes from the outside to the center this direction. About a third of the way through the wood. And you're going to do the same thing here so you're almost making a cross pattern but you want to bring that cross down so that it's not quite even. And what I mean by that is if you look at this cross it's not quite even right there. Let me get this thing in the camera for you. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to come up this side and we're going to connect those two lines that we've made the cross right there and come in this direction. And you can see the way that splits out is it gives you, I'm going to try to do this real careful so you can see it. What that's going to give you is when you pull that out is it's going to give you one part of that piece of wood that's a point sticking out right there. And as I shave that away to where I pound it down, and if I need to adjust that, I can. I can pound it a little deeper. It's better to go a little bit shallow the first time than to go too deep because you'll compromise the integrity of your stick if you go too deep. So it's better to go a little bit shallow the first time and see what you've got. And you can see that we've got that pointed notch right there. And what we'll do with that is, move this camera out just a little bit, guys. What we'll do with that is, is we'll go right back in here with our baton. And I'll underscore that just a little bit right there. Just like this. And then I'll come to the other side 
and underscore it a little bit over on this side. Just like this. To where I can get in there and get a fine cut or a fine shaving to pop that out, just like that. I didn't quite get in there deep enough on this side. So I'll just push it down with my knife and trim it out. Just like that. And then I'll come over to this side and trim it out. Just like that. Then you can trim anything out of there that's not notched pretty easy. Just like that. Like I said, undercut that a little bit right there where that notch is, or right there where that point is. Just undercut that just a little bit with your knife to remove that. We'll do the same thing over here. What I'm going to do is come in just a little bit more perpendicular to it right here and pop that out like that and then I'll underscore it from here a little bit like this and then again I can just push pressure down on my knife to pop that out of the way just like that I don't quite have this side cut deep enough either I'll cut just a little deeper there and that'll pop that out of the way. And that will give me a notch that I can put on the bale of my pot to hang it off of see that hook right there I put my bell right in there and that will hold it above the fire it's a kind of a complicated notch but once you get used to doing it you can do them pretty fast and you can put four or five of those in a into a stick like we did in one of the bushcraft cooking videos and adjust your pot up and down by that Okay, so let's take the other half of our stick here and work on a couple other notches that are a little more detailed or complicated. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a hole in this stick. And the reason we're going to put a hole in it is so that we could run a piece of cordage through it and tie it through there to maybe make a bow for a bow drill fire or some type of trap component or some type of a T-lever that we're going to use. It just gives us a way to put a hole in this piece of wood without a drill that we can run a piece of cordage through. And what we need to do to do that is we need to thin this down considerably. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to hog off some wood to thin this down in one area of the wood. And it could be in the middle, it could be on the end, it doesn't really matter where that's at. So we're going to thin down an area about the last three or four inches of this piece of wood for this demonstration. And we'll just start to carve that down. And then when we get it thin, we'll put a hole through it. And we're going to use the knee lever for this. Okay, once we've got ourselves a fairly flat area here on our piece of wood, that's when we're going to start our hole. And you can see now, another reason I like to use green wood is we can see exactly where we're at on this piece of wood. And we can see the sap wood versus the heartwood. And we're going to put our notch or our hole in this heartwood area. 
So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to get this out in front of us a good ways so they're not in our triangle of death or anything like that. And our hole is going to be, I'm going to draw a score of line around our stick to kind of give us a guideline. Just like this. And that's going to give us a basic guideline of where we want our hole or how wide we want it. Now, when you are trying to bore with your knife, you're going to want a different grip. You want to palm that knife. You want to bury the butt end of that handle of that knife in your palm so there's no way you can slip when you're twisting and boring with it. And basically, you're going to come in here and you're going to score the wood on all four corners. Just like this. And then you're going to push in and pop chunks out. Just like this. Into the heartwood. Then you're going to do the same thing on the back side. And if you've got that wood very thin, you're probably going to see daylight fairly quickly. And again, being in the heartwood is important because when I pop it out, that heartwood is going to pop out and you're going to leave that sapwood on the outside when you do that. You can see my knife just went straight through there. Well, now all I really need to do is come in here, palm my knife, gouge it to get my square hole. I just need to come in here on these corners and insert my knife and push and wiggle a little bit. And I'm going to get that square cut for that hole. And I'm just going to use the very tip of my knife to shear that out. That's all I'm really doing there. And that hole doesn't have to be perfectly clean, obviously. But if we want to make it look really neat and tidy, we can use the edge of our knife kind of like a shear right there on that corner pop that out with just like that just make sure we get good clean cuts in there and we'll have a pretty clean square hole in there when we're done Okay, the last notch that we're going to talk about today is a hafting notch. And a hafting notch basically is you're going to cut a section of wood out of here and leave a fork so that you could haft a spear point or a blade into that piece of wood. It also gives you a way to make a fork if you can't find a fork branch. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to start with a couple simple stop cuts and those are going to be V notches. So we're going to come over to the side. And this is the depth that you're going to make that notch from the top. So we're going to take and cut ourselves a V-notch v on both sides. Just like this. And that basically is a stop cut, as you'll see in just a minute. And I'm going to cut that just about a little less than a third of the way through the stick. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Clean that out just a little bit, and you can see that. And I'm going to do the same thing just opposite that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my knife over and put a, a slice here. We've got kind of a bowed stick here, so this might be a little tricky, but we'll get it done. Probably stand on it.
Trying to move on me. Okay. So we've got one on each side and they're about even. Okay, now we're going to figure out how deep we want our fork to be and we're going to turn our stick and we're going to make notches opposite each other but opposite these two as well. So we're going to go here and keep our stick still. I'm going to have to stand on it again. Okay, so now that I have that notch opposite these two, I need another one on this other side. So I'll trace a line around, just like that. And that's where I want the center of my notch. And you can see I'm busting with the stick because a little bit on the crooked side. Just a little bit while I'm pounding on here. Okay, so we have a series of V notches. We have one here, one here, one here, and one here. They're all opposite each other, basically. And what we want is we want the fork to be left on this stick. So what we're going to do is we're going to pry underneath here and split this down to about right here. And then we're going to do the same thing with this. And then we're going to try to pop this piece of wood out from the center to leave a fork. And that's a little bit of a tricky business. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our foot on a stick to try to give you a good example of how to do this. And I'm going to baton this very lightly just like that. And you can see that it's lifted up now. You can see where I've lifted that piece of wood, that's my fork. So I've got to get down in there as deep as I want it and lift that up, just like that. And that piece of wood has to be one piece for this thing to be right. So I'm going to work that down just like this. green wood is a little bit different than it is if you were using dry wood. So I'm going to take this all the way down to the edge here. Just like this. Just like that. And then I'm going to pull my knife out. Then I'm going to go over to the other side and you can see that V right there. Now I'm going to come over to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. And you can, I heard it pop. There it is. Now I just need to lift it up, slide my knife into it a little bit, just like this. And I want to make sure I get it deep enough. If I have to angle my knife down a little bit to do that, I will. like this and again I'm going to take that down to right to the edge of my other notches just like that okay and now I have a split two places I have a split here and I have a split here this needs to come out. So what I'm going to do now is I have to make sure that my notches are deep enough. And this one right here isn't quite deep enough. So I'm going to take it a little bit deeper. Just like this. 
I want that notch to be down into the heartwood on both sides because basically I'm going to split this stick out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lever stick and that can be any piece of wood that I find laying around that I can use for an anvil like this and I'm going to break this piece of wood out by cracking it. Just like this. Now I've pulled that piece out and you can see I've got a little bit of heartwood left inside that V. The only way I'm going to get that out of there is either to carve that out of there because it didn't break clean. It came out from the inside of this piece of wood right here. I can carve that out of there or I can split it out of there. But I can get my knife in there just like this. And I can cut most of that out because you can see where it's at right there and right there. And if I take my time, I can pretty much cut that out. But that'll give me a square shelf in there. Like I said, I could have made that a little bit more robust had I gotten in there a little bit better. Let's just kind of trim some of this off of here. Make this look a little bit neater. Like that. Okay, so when you've cleaned that up, you're going to end up with what's called a hafting notch, which basically just gives you two straights that you can put a blade in between and haft around it. Now, these wouldn't necessarily have to be this long. It's over-exaggerated for this demonstration. They could be that long. It depends on how deep you want to haft your blade. Okay, I took some of this fuzz that we shaved off the back of our piece of wood with the back of our mora knife earlier in the other video we just scraped the back of it like this to get those fine hairy shavings and all I did here was I took some of those shavings and I've been out here probably two hours and I took some of those fine shavings and I put them in the direct sun and these are those shavings here and I'm going to mix some of these shavings that are dry now off this baton tease it out a little bit to increase the surface area where my sparks can catch fire and now let's talk about the proper use of a ferrocerium rod with your knife a lot of people I see with their ferro rods will push away with their knife like this to achieve the sparks you don't want to do that you want to hold the knife in a solid location just like with the chest lever grip or the knee lever grip and you want to pull the ferro rod so you want to put your hand down on a solid area and push sparks toward your tender just like that and that's not too bad for just a little bundle of fur that we had from carbon sticks so that's the proper use of a ferrocerium rod with your knife. Well, folks, I appreciate you joining me today for this video on a little bit about knife safety, knife use, and a little bit about notching sticks and making different types of basic bushcraft style notches. I'm Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for your support. I thank you for your reviews. I thank you for everything that you do for the folks associated with the Pathfinder School. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.